Hello! In this video, we're going to learn the perfectum. And what is the perfectum? Well, it's the past tense that you would translate as the present perfect in uh, English. However, it's not always the same. Uh, it doesn't convert well into the present perfect because sometimes in English you're going to use another tense for the uh, perfectum. However, uh, the perfectum, so what is it used for? Well, this is for uh, one-off things, so you, things you only do once, uh, for things that happen at no specific time, for facts, for things you see uh, the result of right now. Uh, and that's it. That's uh, why you're, you would be using the uh, perfectum. For example, what have je vorige week gedaan? What have you done last week? Typically, uh, for things that you do, for facts, uh, for statements, you're going to use this uh, tense, so that you're going to use the perfectum. And the answer is, ik heb gewerkt. I worked, or I have worked. So how do you form this tense? Well, you're going to use the personal pronoun, so ik, jij, hij, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then the verb hebben, ik heb, jij hebt, uh, hij heeft, uh, wij jullie zijn hebben. And then you're going to use ge, and you're going to make uh, with this ge the past participle. And how do you form the past participle? Well, first of all, the ge, and then the root of the verb, so that's the, um, the infinitive without the en. And then a T uh, in this case. But don't worry, we're going to see plenty of cases in this uh, video. Plenty of other cases. All right. Interesting to know, this uh, past participle doesn't change. In some other languages, this past participle will change and you'll have to figure out whatever has to change. But no, here it remains the same for all the personal pronouns. For example, wij hebben gemaakt, we have made, uh, hebben, well, that's for the wij, uh, wij hebben ge, ge, maak, root, t, t. Wij hebben gemaakt, or we hebben uh, iets gemaakt, we have made something, iets, something. All right, now let's try to make things a little more, bit more complicated. This sentence. Ik heb in België gewoond. I have lived in Belgium. Congratulations. Belgium is a nice country. Uh, gewoond. You see there, there's a D. Well, why is there a D and not a T? Ha. Very good question. When we're choosing whether to use a T or a D, we're going to look at the last letter of the root, which is, in this case, WUN, the N. All right? And if uh, it is part of a series of letters that you see here, then we're going to use the T. All right, so for example, werken, you see the K is there. Ah, that's the last letter of the root. Ik heb gewerkt. Okay, then we're going to use the T. And how do you remember this little row of letters? Well, uh, I've put them in a, in a particular way, because if you look well, you could form the word there, soft ketchup. And... This contains all the letters that will use the T. However, be reminded that you do not hear the difference between a T and a D in Dutch for the past participle. Uh, so it's only if you have to write it that and then you can think a little bit, oh, is this letter part of the soft ketchup? Now, one additional thing, for example, ik heb geleefd en ik heb beseft. Then you're like, ik heb geleefd, I have lived, and I have, ik heb beseft means um, I um, realized, or I have realized. And you see, oh, well, there's a D and there's a T, but 
it's an F, so shouldn't it always be a T? Because the F is part of soft ketchup. Huh? F. That's a very good um, observation. Why do we use a D there and a T there? Well, because the root of a leaven, to live, is with a V. And the root of besefen, that's besef, is an F. So we're going to look at the, um, the root uh, of the infinitive to determine whether we're putting a T or a D. Complicated? Definitely. Uh, and on top of that, you see that the E is doubled. So leven, the infinitive, is L-E-V, no double E, and that is for the pronunciation. If it's a long E, we're going to make a double E there. All right, another one that is similar to this F-V thing is the S-Z thing. For example, gereist, ik heb gereist, I have traveled. And ik heb gewist, I have erased. All right, so it's a reizen with a Z, so it's a D, because Z is not part of soft ketchup. And wissen, uh, to erase, is, well, it's an S, so soft ketchup, you hear the S there, so it's with a T. All right, ha, lots of exception, and we're, it's not, uh, this lesson isn't over yet. Uh, we're going to see three more main exceptions that happen in this perfectum tense. The first one is when a verb starts in a particular way, so the infinitive starts in a particular word combination, then we're not going to put the g in front. Wow, well, that's a lot of words. Uh, for example, the verbs that start with ont, ver, b, Her, er, and g. We're not going to put a g there, usually, unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, and well, there are even more exceptions. You can have exceptions about the exceptions and so on. So, uh, let's see some examples here. So, usually it's, uh, it doesn't take a g. Ik heb hem ontmoet. I have met him. Uh, um, ont, one of those special combinations, okay, then you don't put a ge. Another one, ik heb het veranderd. I have uh, changed it. Veranderd, so not geveranderd. Okay, another one, ik heb het betaald. I have paid it. Betaald, uh, be, one of, this, uh, of these things. And then two last ones, hij heeft me herkend and we hebben je erkend. We have, um, the last one is we have recognized you as, as a, we have given you a status. And we hebben, uh, hij heeft me herkend. He has recognized me like the face. Ah, he has recognized, oh, that's uh, that person. So, uh, her and er also, typical ones, no ge. And to add a little bit more, verbs that take uh, some kind of a pronoun, uh, for example, onderzoeken and voorspellen, these also do not take a g. Why? Because the verb starts with onder, and that's below. Uh, that's, yeah, you could use it separately. You don't need to, to have uh, zoeken to use it in a different uh, sentence. For example, the cat is under the table, then you would use under. So if this thing is pasted to the verb, then we're not going to use a ge. And this is uh, really, really complicated. Onderzoeken means to research, by the way, and voorspellen, to predict. Voor can also be used separately. So we're not going to put a ge just in front of uh, voorspellen. Ik heb voorspeld. And ik heb onderzocht. I have researched. Alright, and then you're like, onderzocht? Oof, isn't it onderzoekt? Ah, well, 
That's a very good comment, very good observation, uh, because there are a lot of exceptions still to be seen. And that's point number two of those three exceptions. Um, that is, uh, some past participle are simply irregular. And you may ask, uh, is this normal? Yeah. For example, some um, of uh, the, the, these things, for example, uh, ik heb genomen, from nemen, they will typically change the, um, the vowel. Ik heb genomen, nemen becomes nomen. Well, these you just have to study by heart. And it's the same for onderzocht. You just have to study them by heart. That's why there's a link in the description of this video to learn these uh, exceptions by heart. And then the third exception is the hebben. We have seen that it is ik heb gewerkt, I have worked, but some verbs take zijn and some, term, uh, some verbs take both hebben and zijn depending on the meaning. So yeah, we can complicate on and on and on, but uh, important for you to know right now is that some uh, verbs that are used very often take zijn. For example, ik ben gegaan. I, um, I have uh, gone. And the second one is ik ben vergeten. I have forgotten. And there you're like, isn't it hebben? And no, it is ik ben vergeten. And this is typically one of those things my students forget uh, often. And then I say, uh, you, you've forgotten something. And then ik mm, vergeten, ah, ik ben vergeten, oh, ik, and then they say, I have forgotten that, but with the wrong, in the wrong way, so we, we do a ping pong game, like, yeah, ik ben vergeten, ik heb vergeten, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that, it's a, it's a little funny one, um, because it's easy to forget, ik ben vergeten. All right, and another one is, ik ben geweest, um, I have been, and this is one of those uh, typical ones where, uh, the Dutch and the English do, do not translate well. Um, I have been is another tense in uh, in English, but in Dutch it's simply the perfectum. These exceptions are as well in a link in the description below. All right, if you're interested in, to, in the imperfectum, well, feel free to click on the link there above to learn more about the second uh, tense that is most used in Dutch. Tot ziens!